it's Richard from Raw EDC with another video. This time a little bit of cooking with some new equipment that I've just acquired quite recently. This is the Trangia 35 ULBL hard anodized stove and I also have another new piece of equipment. This is the Hawkins Contura or Contura 1.5 litre pressure cooker. Now what I'm trying to do here today is uh, relive a bit of my childhood. My mum always used pressure cookers at home and um, what I wanted to do was adapt as much as possible um, the Trangia 35 for using this pressure cooker. So what I have managed to do is I sourced the trivet which is actually more for the 27 to sit in the smaller ring. I'll put, uh, I'll put some photographs in with the video. So, as much as I'll use that for maybe my mocha pot and other things, it's not really suitable for this. What I did manage to find though was um, a 7 inch, this is from an air fryer, or for an air fryer, and it wasn't quite big enough to span the top level of the, um, of the pan holder inside the Trangia. So what I've done is I've cut it open and I've put a couple of spacers in, and now it fits perfectly into there. And this means that when the pressure cooker goes in, it doesn't fall all over the place and also doesn't rest on the handle. Gives us a little bit more um, freedom when we're cooking as well. So the idea is today is to make a very simple um, recipe but very nice recipe from the booklet that comes with the pressure cooker and of course the wind has managed to take it off page but this is the little booklet that you get with 150 recipes in it and uh, it's in a fantastic style. Uh, I'll take some photographs for the, the video as well. And the style of this is, uh, I think, looks a bit 70s, 80s, absolutely awesome. The Hawkins pressure cooker are used worldwide, um, especially in India where they're made, and they're absolutely fantastic pieces of kit. I've already had a little play inside with it, but the plan is to get this thing going with the Trangia. Now, the recipe I've chosen today, as I say, I lost it, but I remember the page, 31. And on page 31 we have quite a simple recipe, Irish stew, which I do love an Irish stew. And the reason I've chosen something simple is just to get used to the pressure cooker. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut up all my vegetables and get them ready. All that it asks for is some lamb, some potato, some onions and some lamb stock, which I do have ready made here. Um, I did happen to boil up some water in the tranche before and uh, made up my stock. So I'll get my vegetables cut and then I'll come back to you. Using the firebox chef knife today. So the meat's in, the onions are pretty much all in as well. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add them all to the pot as the recipe asks for. I think I just lost an onion. There we go. Add them in. It also asks for potatoes, inch cubed, just like it says with the lamb. So once they're in, the rest of the potatoes go in later stock goes in. There's 240 mils of stock there. And what happens with these is you've got to get them up to temperature. Now the lid goes on, it's a little bit of practice with this, the lid goes on at a, an unusual angle there. Once the pan lid is in, you turn it around and you pull up on the pivot. Still not very well practiced at it. Better if I lay it down and then hook it up at the back there. Now you should start it off with that off and also you should start it up I'm 
using gas today. I am going to try it with the um, with the spirit burner, but I think that probably it's best if I try it with the gas because it's a lot more controllable first. You've got to start it off at a sort of moderate heat until you get steam showing, and then that goes on and it starts to uh, whistle out and you get sh should have about three to four whistles per minute uh, once you're up at usable pressure. Um, this recipe calls for 10 minutes of cooking time and then after the 10 minutes you add the sliced potatoes on top and then four minutes time after that allow it to cool naturally and then we can serve the dish so hopefully that works. See it started with a little off. Now as with television or video you can actually pause which I've done here and we are just starting to see steam and a little bit of liquid spurting out the top so it's now time to put the cap on. And that was minutes 85 no sorry two minutes 35 seconds of course it's not going to be 85 seconds we're now up at a temperature where the pressure is about to start building and the pressure cap goes on and we should see very soon the first show of gas the first show of steam uh, coming out I did should have mentioned that it takes salt and pepper in the recipe as well and i'm using a lamb stock cube um, for my stock, I thought that would be appropriate, but I suppose you could use any any stock that you've got. A homemade stock, maybe from a pressure cooker, would be better. So, I know that this pressure is building. You use a medium heat, not a maximum heat with this particular setup. And once I start to see my first steam, which shouldn't be long, um, I'm going to turn it down to a, a medium to low heat. seeing a little bit of liquid coming out from the top which is normal steam rises and condensates up to the top and comes out a little bit until it starts to whistle which I think is any moment now so I'm going to turn it down just enough to maintain the temperature and we should see three to four whistles per minute if it's faster than that you better turn the temperature down if you're not seeing that you turn the temperature up. There you go, another one. You start your cooking time from the first whistle. So that should have been 10 minutes. So I'm just going to do 9 minutes 30 there. That's fine. And we should have a stew. still a bit too hot now but I think that's me got it now at a, a temperature I should have it maybe get maybe four whistles per minute which is absolutely fine um, it's hardly on at all I can barely hear it but I know it's still working there's a little bit of wind today so maybe I should have had a, a bit of shielding up but it's working quite well has been allowed to cool naturally for a few minutes and any remaining steam is taken off just by lifting up the pressure cap. Take off the pressure cap at this point and this part of the recipe calls for us to put the remaining potatoes in for a further 10 minutes so we have to release the, the lid. Try not to let it fall into your food. It gets turned around. 
taken off. I'm being quite careful because I'm still quite new to it. This already looks fantastic, but I'm going to add the remaining potato slices. Not very well done. I should have maybe done them a little bit neater than this. The potato slices go in on the top and they are sort of served a little less cooked if you like, a little less macerated because the potatoes go into making the gravy, I believe, in the Irish stew. Now, the lid then goes back on in exactly the same way as before, locked into position. As you can see there. Then back on. Lift that that way. It's going to come off. And of course I should have lit it as well, which would have been helpful. So back on a reasonably high heat. Get it back up to temperature. Some recipes you just put them on and leave it and that's fine. Some of them you have to remove the lid, add extra ingredients, certainly some of the rice based ones you're required to cook the rice and then add things like prawns and that afterwards. So we'll get this back up to pressure with a reasonable gas. After 20 seconds I already had a show of liquid, of course it's all hot, the liquid inside is hot, the food inside is hot, um, so we are now one minute. hear it going. Maybe I haven't got it quite as high as I could have it. Again, you can't have it up at full temperature, it'd be too much. And then we'll take about four minutes from the first show of steam again. On 20. So just under two minutes to get back up to operating and we'll take it four minutes from here. Four minutes from here, that's clearly too high now. We'll turn the temperature down. Let's say three to four shows of steam per minute is what we're looking for. Roughly that. And uh, four minutes from now we should, should have an Irish stew. That's three minutes 52, 53, 54. So that's us coming up to four minutes now. I'm just going to turn off the gas and let it cool naturally and then we'll be able to open it up and serve. It's been allowed to cool naturally for a minute or two now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off the pressure head like that, remove it from the transier and then I'm going to remove the lid by squeezing, releasing the back pin back. Turning away from myself about 90 degrees and pulling away. And that's looking fantastic in there. I'm already very happy with that. So inside, you can see it's cooked properly. Potatoes are on the top. I've not done this before, but I'm going to get this out of here carefully. It did say to serve the potatoes around the side and then everything in the middle. But I have to say, Everything is really well cooked in here, I can tell. Wonderful. Just look at that. Stir up the remaining stew together. I'm just going to tip it out. Easiest way to do things when it's a small pot like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, I'm about to try it for the first time and see how it goes. The idea of a pressure cooker is that you cook meats uh, and foods for a short period of time and they taste like they've come out of a slow cooker, that's the idea. So let me have a wee go and see, I found a little bit of lamb there. Mm. Well that's amazing. I've maybe gone a little bit heavy on the salt because of course the stock cube will have had salt too. Mmm, that meat is falling apart.
as if it's been in a slow cooker for a long time. Absolutely delightful. That meat's just falling apart. It is genuinely just like a slow cooker meal. Now I may have put some more liquid in there and less potatoes. Probably a lot of you are saying, well that doesn't look much like a an Irish stew to me, but I can vouch for it. It does taste very, very good. And of course, it's the first time I've done this, playing with the liquids and being careful. So, um, yeah, more liquid, maybe larger pieces of potato, maybe slightly less cooking time, but it's certainly worked out the way I would like it to.